Welcome back to Adrift, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for watching my video today. Uh, last we left off, we were gonna fix some comms channels. It's actually been a while since I've played this. Uh, so I gotta get back into the swing of things. Oh my god. It's so strange stepping back into the rift and like into my spacesuit. This is the last time I was playing, um, I floated around for quite a bit, like off camera, because I was trying to figure out what to do, if you remember. And uh, I definitely got the hang of moving around. I, it got to the point where um, it started to feel really natural and like maybe I've still got like some of that moving, like d doing stuff like this, you know, just like limboing through. See, I just bumped into something right there. But I feel like I have a lot more control over, wow, strange, over kind of like what I'm doing now. Um, but let's see if that kind of carries over because it's been a couple days since I played this. Yes. I think I'm going the right way. Um, I know there's three nodes, right, that we need to fix. This should be, oh, okay, this is one of the nodes. But, um, I didn't really figure out, that's nice, it's floating right here, this hard drive. I didn't figure out what I needed to do inside these nodes. I know that we're trying to take the comms array back online. What's that? Array alignment failure. Alright, so I like this little, uh, um, kind of, I don't even know what you call it. It's like a, just a little readout, these texts, this text over here to my bottom, or top left. Um, they provide contextual clues as to like what's going on in the specific areas that uh, I'm in. Which I think is really cool because it implies that this suit that I'm wearing has, you know, at least some sort of geolocation ability. We know it has monitoring software because it monitored our vitals. There's another hard drive in there, so am I supposed to be doing something back there? Or, oh no, maybe just right here. Using the inertia to move around is also super fun. Oh, this is a photo. Ah! <laughs> Seriously, just grab it with your left hand, you dink. Give me that. My uh, my lady Alex Ochoa or whatever her name is is exclusively right-handed. If you're trying to get her to pick up an object with it, oh my god, grab the picture. Thank you. Give me the picture. Thank you. Is that me? Teresa. Oh no, maybe that's my daughter. I know that I'm Asian, so that could be a relative of mine. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. So I think whenever these uh, handles on the left and right are shown, this is like an area where it's going to autopilot us. Or maybe not. Whoa. <gasps> We're outside now. Oh my god, that was so crazy. What a strange transition. Whoa. Is that me? You are totally alone, detached from all humanity. Suddenly, with a distorted glitch, you are transported to a baseball game in China, or a Vietnam War protest Whoa. in 1967, or a police surveillance drone over the islands of Los Angeles. That's awesome. Random moments of life, millions of them from all over Earth. That's super cool. But what am I doing here? And also, I'm running out of a. Uh, what's it called? Oh my god, this game is still amazing. Just being able to like float through that stuff, like how I just did. I can't describe the sense of presence it gives you. What I was gonna say was, um... It would be super cool to be able to just hear random, you know, uh, people speaking like that all over the world. I'm running out of oxygen, this is not good. I don't understand what I'm supposed to be doing. Like, manually aligning these things. Um, is there a quick place I can grab some oxygen? Haha, -ha, thank god. Alright, so that tells me the fact that this is here... Oh, I'm gonna reset my helmet here. The fact that this is floating here makes me think that, um... I'm supposed to be out here doing something. Whoa. Alright, let's figure out exactly what we're supposed to be doing here. It's definitely something out here. I would bet money on it anyway. Uh, maybe something flashing. These things are all flashing. Um, nothing here really looks like anything we've been able to interact with yet. Nothing there. Maybe I need some kind of like tool or something. Maybe we're not supposed to be. I'm tired of moving around places and not being able to affect it. But of course that just would only be true. Here, hold on. Let's limbo my way in here. Whoop. Ah, oh, it just feels it's going upside down. What do you think? It just feels so natural. Ow, except for when I bump into things. Ah, here we go. There we go. Um, that's the exit. Whoa. I really don't know. Um, maybe I need like the vocalis core. 
You know what? Here's what we're gonna do. I think I came in from there. Unless there's like multiple ways to go here. There are not. Okay. So. Uh, it's taking me a second to get used to the controls again. I'm sorry. Um, oh shit, I'm really low on oxygen. Let's go ahead and grab some of that right now. And I think really my number one goal right now is to go around to all the four different modules that are outside in space and get the um, cores. Because that at least is something that it's asked me to do that I know I can do right now. Although I tried to get that one and it didn't really seem to work out. So this should take me... No, okay, I came from here then? Oh, I do not understand what I'm supposed to be doing. Oh, I don't know. I'm all turned around. Um, whoa, hello, reset. That I don't like. Maybe it's just like a byproduct of the DK2, but um, every once in a while it'll, what is that interference sound I'm getting? It will uh, reset the position of my helmet, which is very strange, it feels odd. Wow. Okay. Um, I don't really know which way I'm supposed to be going, so I can get outside that way, that makes sense to me. Um, and then that's like our main station. I think that's the one we've been to. I'm gonna go out that way, actually. That way we can grab some more oxygen on the way. Unless, you know what, I bet there's gonna be no helmet, come on. Stay with me. Stay with me, buddy. Oh my gosh, I feel like I can reach out and touch that door. Who, babe. Let's go. Oh. Grab some of this. Nice and quick. And then we're out. We're out of here. So strange. So, I wonder how that's- that can't just be feeding directly into my helmet. It has to be feeding into some sort of oxygen containment system. Make a lot more sense to me. Well, my helmet is pretty big. Probably hold a lot of oxygen. Alright, here we go. You know, I had a feeling there was going to be little oxygen doodads right outside here. There's usually some in the uh, openings and exits of the buildings. But, uh, no, it's just space food. And let's see if I can get a smack. Nope, too far away. Okay, wow. That is pretty nuts. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. Now, I believe its main problem, it said, that the comms array was having was that it's out of alignment. Which should mean that, you know, we'd be able to realign it. Or you would assume. Um, let's check out this little free-floating thing here. It's gotta have something to do with it. I'm gonna go ahead and orient ourselves up. Up is obviously relative. If you've ever seen or read Ender's Game, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I've actually never seen Ender's Game. I'm a huge fan of the books, the whole series. Uh, what I actually like better than Ender's Game is the Ender Shadow series. Am I just, it's just like a pass-through kind of deal? That's okay. If you guys uh, like Ender's Game, if you like the movie or you like the book, um, you may not know that there is a... Now, Ender's, Ender's Game series is actually five books. Um, but the second one takes place far farther in the future. It's quite a few years after the first one, which is Ender's Game, because Ender goes on a spaceship and, like, relativistic... Travel um, means that, like, when you... Ugh, that's so disorienting. When you go on the ship, when you arrive, even though you've been in cryostasis, um, many, many years have passed, even though they haven't for you. Uh, but anyway, there is a sister series to the Ender's Game series. Okay, so here's all the stuff. Um, called Ender's Shadow, which follows Bean, his kind of uh, little sidekick, bro. And I actually prefer it to the main series because it touches on a lot of uh, things that are, like, the Ender's Game series is cool, but um, Ender's Shadow is really cool because it still takes place on Earth and in kind of um, futures that, like, plausible kind of Earth settings for, like, the near future. Oh, look, that's one of the dead people. We should float out there and say hi. Um, I'm kind of rambling here. Ender's Shadow takes place on Earth in the immediate future following Ender's Game. Ender's Game is not too far along in the future, and so, like, the setting and a lot of the stuff going along with, like, the nations and, like, the geopolitics has a lot more basis in our reality, and that's a little bit more interesting to me than a brand new planet that's 200 years in the future where, like, you know, who knows if that's what colonization efforts will look like. But at least with Ender's Shadow, there is, like, that element of uh, realism, I guess you could say, to it. 
So those stars are kind of weird, like these ones that I'm looking at right now, because they don't really look that far away. They look like they are on a... Like, they look like they're far away from me, but they don't look like they are stars, like, way off in the distance. You can tell that they are on a surface that is, like, a skybox not too far over there. We should be well on our way. How's our oxygen doing? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and double back over here, grab some oxygen, and then that's what I'm looking for, is that boy straight ahead. I'm trying to focus my attention on it because I know that you guys see what I see. Um, so that boy is where we want to go to get our core... Uh, what's it called? We need to fabricate another core. So I'm gonna grab this. And I haven't gotten to see any of the dead people yet, and that's definitely one of them down there. So we should go check that out. It looks like there's oxygen next to him conveniently too, so we don't have to be afraid that we'll lose air. So I'm generally going. You can see because of my inertia, I've started using these, like the directors. Oh, wait. So that's marked. You see that? It's marked with a communications thing. So do I somehow move that? I don't have the strength to move that with just me. What if once I get all the cores fabricated and whatever, I get access to like a vehicle that I could use to like fix these things? Because there's one there, there's one here, and in theory there should be three of them then. Yes, that would make sense. I could reconnect it there maybe? Or there? I don't know. Let's see. Maybe I'm not supposed to fix everything. I don't really know what my end goal is here. So there's one. And then, oh, look at that dead person. There's two. And then there's a third one over there. I don't really think it matters. And new rights to be won. And they must be won and used. What? Of all For space science, like nuclear science and all technology, who is that? Is that JFK? Oh, it is. Alright, take bets as to who this is. Wow, Lopez. Oh, wow, that's uh, actually kind of disorienting. By disorienting, I mean, like, disturbing. Should I be doing something? This really feels like it's a dead person floating in front of me. Oh, whoa, that was not what I meant to do. I'm so sorry. That was pretty cool, though, I gotta admit. <laughs> He reacted much like I imagined a body would. I'm gonna save him just so he doesn't burn up in the atmosphere. Is there a way for me to like collect his body? I feel like there should be. Wow, this is really surreal, guys. I can't really describe it. So in theory, if I slow up here, has he stopped? No. Wow. Whoa. No national conflict in outer space as yet. This is, um... It's hazards are hostile to us all. This is actually, uh, a more moving experience than I thought it would be. Or I didn't really think about it at all. Um... Something about seeing this body just free-floating like this, and with this planet in the background. This is really something else, guys. This is, um, I'm feeling a little touched right now. There's a, uh, I can't remember who said it. Maybe it was like Buzz Aldrin. There's a really, um, cool quote. About, or maybe it was just someone who went into, you know, low orbit for a little bit. What happened to that oxygen? I'm gonna need it pretty quick here. Who said that, uh, someone asked this person, whoever it was, um, who had been into low orbit space, uh, how he felt and if it had changed, you know, his perspective on anything and instantaneously he was like, no, definitely, like my, your perspective instantly shifts and kind of the, uh, the things that seem like such important issues, um, seem so, I don't want to say insignificant because he's speaking specifically in reference to things like, uh, you know, politics and international kind of conflicts and things of that nature but um he said that it who was it maybe it was buzz aldrin i don't know but he said that you kind of immediately adopt this almost global mindset where you just it's it's humbling it's probably one of the most humbling things you could ever experience wow just to be up over our planet our one infinitesimal infinitesimally 
sla small planet. Well, I can't speak when I'm in this thing. That, you know, if you think about it, it's like everything anyone has ever done um, is... Okay, let's see. I gotta... Before I go off on this little rant, I gotta make sure I'm going in the right... Oh, there's another dead person over there. Um, am I gonna be able to make that? Am I going the right way? I'm still floating. Alright, let's hope we have enough. But anyway... Um, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah. You look at, like, these planets, right? And you look at something like Earth from a perspective that makes it look so much smaller than what we're used to seeing, because obviously most of the time we're on the ground, and we don't really get a, a view of the planet like that. It's like everything that has ever happened um, in the history of human civilization, every person who's ever lived or conflict that's ever occurred, everything that's ever mattered to anyone in the history of the planet, all of it happened on this one little blue dot that is just this grain of sand in this massive, unfathomable nothingness. And I mean, I shouldn't say nothingness because there's a lot of stuff in it, but I mean, I, I mean that in the scale. And it, it is, it's just, it's humbling, you know, or so I imagine it would be. It's not like I've ever actually been to space, but I'm really digging this experience because this is about the closest I think I'll get at least for a uh, quite a while. I would love to go into space. I wouldn't say it's ever been one of my dreams to go into space in the sense that um, I need to make sure I'm going the right way here. Try not to use my oxygen. Here I can see it. my velocity tells me to go that way. Um, anyway, I wouldn't say it's my dream to go into space. I've never felt that sort of compulsion um, that people who describe space as being their dream seem to feel. But I'm obviously very interested to go there. If someone said, hey Dylan, do you want to go into space? I would definitely take them up on that offer. It's funny the way dreams work like that. It's funny the way that um, we decide as people how to spend our lives, you know? And like the kind of the essence of a dream and what that means to different people. I mean, typically speaking, and a lot of people don't get to follow their dreams, and it's a real shame. Um, but that's kind of a discussion for another time, a little bit too heavy to get into. I mean, hey, you know, the way I like to see it. Well, so a good example right now, I feel like I'm following my dream in making this channel. Um, it's something I've always wanted to do, something I'm very passionate about, and in a way, and not even in a way, directly, that means you guys are also a part of my dream. And you're a reason, the fact that you, whoever you are sitting there watching this right now, um, you have an active role in making my dream come true. And that's why whenever you hear me say Satellite how grateful I am received. for all of you guys out there, Personal I'm not fucking around. I really do mean it. Sebastian. You are, you're making my dream a reality. So thank you for doing that. Hopefully you're getting something out of it as well. Oh, cool. One of the seven natural wonders of the world. An ecosystem created entirely by billions of organisms. A living world within a living world. Yeah. And yet, as I look down upon the wonder of all known creation, I feel nothing. Earth is no longer my home. This huh. is where I belong where my days will end. In some strange ways, the cancer has saved my life. Whoa. I am completely at peace. Wow. That's an interesting alternate perspective from our boy McDonough, who apparently we are now going to hear again. Lucy's uh, piano recital. All right, let's toss that shit. I got more stuff to grab. Uh Woo! See, it just feels so natural. This is the Moonlight Sonata. This is one of my favorite musical pieces. Man. Floating around in this while listening to the Moonlight Sonata, you guys, this is a surreal experience. It's very beautiful.
hope you don't mind if I take a moment of silence here, but I'm feeling very moved today. Is that weird to say? Here we go. I'm gonna need some oxygen pretty quick here. Oh. Looks like another one of the communications arrays. Or at least more Emergency escape vehicles offline. Oi. Whoa. Required for launch. Okay, so I can't get super close to those because they blow me away. In a literal sense. Um, I'm running low on oh my gosh. I can't keep bumping things. Alright, there better be oxygen pretty quick here. Alright, easy, easy. Easy. Oh, there is. Uh-oh. I'm really running out here. Okay, we need to give it one last push. Oh, I'm starting to see weird... Oh, those are sparks. I don't know if we're gonna make it, guys. I gotta... We're so close. Nice and easy. Fuck. Oh my god, we're so close. I think we got it. Oh, thank God. Whew, that was uh, probably the closest we've come to dying in a while. Um, is there more oxygen? Because I only have half a tank still. I'm just going to float, turn for a moment. Make sure I haven't missed any. I think there was only one in that one. I don't think I missed any. I'm probably getting close to the episode limit. I'll tell you what. We're gonna get right over there, where that next oxygen is, and then we'll call it. Give you and me a chance to hang out a little bit more. Whoever you are. Wow. I found, I think I mentioned this in one of the other videos, one of my favorite things to do now is just a uh, backflip from point A to point B. So it's really cool, because you can just, you know, adjust your inertia, right? So I'm on my way at this moment going where I need to go, as you can tell by these objects. Now I can just sit back and... Woo! See, like, this feels like I'm doing backflips, you know? Like, in real life. I used to have a trampoline when I was a kid. Um, I love that thing, man. It was, like, one of my favorite things. Oh, are those fuel cells? We're on our next go-around here. Let's take a look. Huh, look at my hands go. See, they're not marked as anything. At least that one's not. Where'd he go? That's not marked as anything. Those are definitely fuel cells. Oh, maybe not. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to rocket science. I'm not a rocket scientist. Alright, so we're gonna grab... So that's our ultimate end goal, is that thing. So we're gonna get this boy. Yeah, we know that. Wow, I really... Feels like it's floating right in front of me. All right, double oxygen, and uh, we're gonna go get that thing next time on Belmont Boy. So, like I said, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next episode.